All right, guys, welcome back at m 3 PS Use. Now, what we have here today is a laptop which is quite old, this one. This is actually the first laptop I've ever had, and out of the box, it came in with a Pentium. Pentium, two gigs of DDR3 RAM, and like a 320 gigabyte hard drive, one of those older, slow, 5200 RPMs laptop hard drives. Now, this is actually how I got into, you know, building and modifying computer to begin with since I simply wanted an upgrade and well, I was really lucky actually because first time I went there and I just opened it up, I was pretty naive and I thought that, you know, you could just upgrade your GPU, your CPU easily on laptops, which isn't really the case nowadays. So I just went and opened it up and with five screws, you know, I simply had the RAM, the hard disk and even the CPU being able to open it. Um, and so yeah, I replaced the CPU and right now um, there is actually an i5 in it. An i5 should be a 520M. What we have here today is basically the best thing you can get right now for this laptop. And as you can see, this CPU has pins just like AMD's CPU do. And well, this is an i7-640M. Now this one is still a dual core, dual core for thread. Um, I cannot upgrade to, four, to a 4-core because on this generation the 4-cores do not come with an integrated graphics and this laptop does not have a dedicated graphics card so if I put in the 4-core, even if I find a, a way to you know make it work um, in the end um, it will work but it will have no video output because there is no graphics card so this is the top of the line CPU which we can put in there well, I will also of course take a couple benchmarks and see how both the performance and firmware goes because when upgrading laptops you know most people are concerned about the fact that it will overheat after all this small heatsink and this small fan um, you know was in place just to cool a Pentium can it handle an i7? yeah it can so yeah let's get right into it <laughs> All right, guys, now here we are with the baseline results. Now, as you can see, uh, we just passed the stress test and well, the CPU actually was an i5-450M, which was the cheaper um, i5 I could get at the time. And we have 80 gigabytes of memory. As you can see, it's Mac memory, like I took it from a MacBook, um, an iMac to be fair. What we can see is that this CPU is turboing up to his max speed of 2.6 gigahertz. And if we go and take a look, at the temperature, we can see that it reached a maximum of 73 degrees without throttling. Now, another interesting thing is that it is a PGA. Now, if the socket is a PGA, it means that your laptop CPU is upgradable. Now, as you can see, this is a stress test, which it passed. It's interburn test, so it's pretty demanding. All right, guys, now let's go with slotting the i7 in. As you can see, just six screws were between us and our laptop CPU. Now we can just remove it. And yeah, let's try not to spread this thermal paste everywhere, shall we? Nice, and now with, you know, by simply rotating this one, there we go, we can just take it out. Now, um, exactly like in desktops, uh, as you can see, it has this little triangle here, so you know, just gotta align it properly so we can just slot it right there and then we can just close the socket here we are now i will just clean off the thermal paste apply some new thermal paste and close it up well guys i actually changed my mind i figured why not put some liquid metal in there so we're just gonna do a quick a quick test boot right now uh, as you can see i did not put the screws and there's no thermal paste um, so I will just hold it down with my finger. Now, this is not recommended, guys. <laughs> As I'm saying often and more often lately, but... Now we can just turn it on and let me press it down with my finger. And it's booting, boys, without paste, as you can see. Take a nice look at it, nice. Now, since we're gonna work with the bare dye and liquid metal, I'm gonna use some nail polish because you see those little things here, th those are called SMTs and if the liquid metal goes, goes over there, it will kill the CPU. So now, let me just quickly apply it. 
And here we go, guys. Now we can just let it dry up for a sec and prepare to apply our liquid metal. Now here we are with the actual liquid metal application. This is probably the most delicate thing about this whole uh, you know, process. And well, I will apply it first on the two dies. Uh, one of them is the integrated graphics, by the way. And then I will apply it on the coolers too. That should be it on the die. Yeah, now it's time to go over with the actual cooler. You know, the fact that there are those marks on the cooler showing exactly where the dies are is actually really a luck. Because, you know, this will prevent me from going over the SMTs. All right, now the application is complete. Let me, let me give you a better look. This is it. And now I will just close it up, which is also a quite a delicate part. But I mean, nothing to be worried about. So let me just go with it. And here we are. Now if the nail polish did a good job, we are safe. If the nail polish didn't, we killed the CPU and we'll have to try and fix it. Now, especially when you're dealing with direct die mount, um, you gotta really be aware that, you know, mounting pressure is important. So you wanna go in, a, in an X pattern and be quite delicate. Well, this is basically it, I'd say it's time to you know, flip it over and see if it actually works. So let's do just that. Nice. All right, um, this means there is no short circuit. Now we will test the temperature in a sec. So those are the after results. As you can see, it still passed the stress test and after the stress test, well, we hit a max of 72 degrees on one core and 70 degrees on the other core. This means we um, went down by a couple degrees, but we did so <laughs> while having, you know, this little CPU in there now. As you can see, it's fully recognized and the max it turbos up to is uh, uh, should be 3.4 but I've seen it successfully turbo up to 3.2, then it's probably power limited. Now, that's just great, guys. Like, it made such a jump from before. Um, on Under all core load, it stays at 2.8 gigahertz the whole time, doesn't drop by anything. And, you know, as you can see, temperature is great. And, uh, well, if we go to see the score, we got a pretty sizable increase in the single, as you can see. Like for real, this is quite nice guys. It really reflects the extra megahertz. And yeah, we also get a nice sweet increase in the multi-threading operations. So guys, as you can see, upgrading your laptop if possible can really help. And improving the cooling by using liquid metal or stuff like that really helps as well. So guys, even though this laptop still has this Pentium thing right here, I say we got a nice upgrade. Don't you agree? Well. Let me know if you like this kind of video and tell me what kind of content would you like to see regarding a laptop in the future. Or do you even like laptop content at all because I generally bring more desktop stuff. Thank you again. See you guys.